Three days before our cruise, we got an email from Princess Cruise Lines that said, Hey, do you want to trade in your balcony stateroom for an interior room? Well, after reading the email, we jumped on the offer. And here's why. Thank you so much for watching Backroads Tourist today. My name is Jeff, and my wife and I recently went on a 10-day partial transit cruise of the Panama Canal. We had booked a balcony stateroom on one of the top decks so that we could get a great view of the Panama Canal locks. But just three days before our cruise, we got an email from Princess offering us a move over deal. I talked it over with my wife and we took the deal. But before I tell you about the offer, I'd like to invite you to like this video and subscribe to the Backroads Tourist Channel. Not only do I talk about cruising, but I also take you with me as I visit fun, quirky, unusual places all over the United States. Subscribing is free, and it really helps out the channel. Here's what the offer was. If we gave up our balcony cabin on deck 14 and moved to an inside cabin, they would refund us what we paid for our cabin in the form of refundable onboard credit. Plus, we would get the inside cabin at no charge. So in a nutshell, here's what that means. We would get our inside cabin at no charge. What we paid for the balcony cabin would be refunded to us in the form of refundable onboard credit, except for the taxes, the port charges, things like that. Still, that's a sizable amount being given back to us. Now the big question is, what does refundable onboard credit mean? Well, for the sake of simplicity, Let's say that we were getting $1,000 in refundable onboard credit, but then we spent $500 in dining at specialty restaurants, drinks, onboard purchases, etc. At the end of the cruise, that $500 would be deducted from the onboard credit and we get back $500. Make sense? But here is how I thought that Princess was going to screw us over, and I was sure of this. We had $300 in non-refundable onboard credit in our bank. We were allowed to keep this, but I was sure that any expenses would come out of the refundable credits first. So I got in touch with Princess and I asked them about it and I was wrong. The non-refundable credits, the $300 would be used first. So we still got to do the specialty dining and have a few drinks and it didn't affect the amount that we'd be refunded at the end of the cruise. We had our choice of six inside cabins. Five of them were on upper decks and one was on deck five right by the art gallery. That's the one we took. It was near the staircase, near the elevators, near the casino, the showroom. It was a one minute walk to the International Cafe. It was very convenient for us. We didn't notice any noise and even though it was toward the front of the ship, there wasn't any excessive movement. Now that being said, we did have calm seas every day of the cruise. If the seas have been choppier, it may have been more rocky. We may have experienced more movement. I also want to point out that some people are in love with balconies and they absolutely cannot live without them. And that's fine. To each their own, you do you. We've sailed several times with inside cabins and it's really no big deal for us. To get a cabin on a 10 day cruise for free, except for the port charges and taxes, it was a wonderful deal. And the non-refundable credit covered our specialty dining and our drink charges. At the end of the day, we had a great cruise that was a lot of fun and Princess sent us a refund check that was well over $1,000. We also did pretty well in the casino, but I've already covered that in another video. My final takeaway, if you're ever offered a move over offer, and if you can survive a cruise without a balcony or a window, I'd recommend looking into it. We did, and we had a great time. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm Jeff, and I'll see you on the back roads or on a future cruise.